So I want to go ahead and, and just start doing introductions. We'll get started. My name is Carol Marshart. I'm the executive director of AXIS, and I am really happy that all of you are here. AXIS is the Association for X and Y Chromosome Variations, and our mission is to help everyone who are born with more than the typical number of chromosomes, sex chromosomes, live fuller and more productive lives. And one way we do this is through education, and that's why we have Trisha here. I also want to say all of this, links to this webinar, and so much more is on our website, genetic.org. And I also just have to say, we'd appreciate, we appreciate when people support us financially. Uh, we're a small nonprofit, and uh, we don't get government funding. We just get funding from amazing, generous people like you. So I'll tell you how this webinar got started. So it was during the conference, when, and uh, as you know, Ginny Cover was doing topics about getting help from the government and government assistance and understanding for those people who are coming into adulthood, what are the different things that we can do, um, whether it's for ourselves or we're helping um, one of our child children who's becoming an adult. And I reached out um, to Trisha to, to Penma our services, and I wanted to hear about this job creation and how this worked, and it was something kind of new to me. So it dovetailed on some of the things I was learning from Ginny, and Trisha was kind enough to respond to me. So Trisha Zeltwanger is fantastic, and she's a she is a job coach, and she trains other people how to do these jobs. So I'm gonna let her talk a little bit about herself and just say hi, and then go on into our presentation. It's great to have you here, Trisha. Oh, thank you so much, Carol. I, I am really happy to be able to be here and help support as much as I can about um, custom, what we call customized employment. I'm actually a career counselor and, and a job developer for Penmar Human Services. Um, and part of, uh, you know, um, you know, that is that um, we do is through the um, exploration and discovery process, which we're going to um, I'm going to be happy to show the PowerPoint and give you guys some insight of what that looks like for your loved ones. Um, but actually, I, I just to tell you a little bit of backstory about who I am and where I've come from, I've actually been with Penmar for almost 33 years. Um, I came into it as a DSP, which is a direct support professional, um, you know, working in a sheltered workshop environment. Um, and when we um, started really getting deep into doing that type of bringing in work um, from the outside and, and paying them a sub-minimal wage to the individuals we support um, with, you know, training them with different tasks um, and they can make a, you know, earn a wage. Um, I was their contract manager for quite, quite many, many, many years. Um, and then we started transitioning out of that and getting basically removing that out of Penmar um, and going into um, customized employment where we will now help the individuals find their dream jobs out in this world, figuring out what their, their love and their aspirations and what their, a, a truly a, a meaningful life for them is. Um, and that's part of what I do through employment. Um, PEMAR actually serves over 600 individuals um, who have an intellectual disability, um, you know, in their home life um, with mom and dad, maybe. We also have, um, we support through residential programs. We own, uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say about 60 homes that we staff and support. Um, and then we also have a day service program where we, where the individuals can come if they want to. And we have, um, different things inside of that shelter, I'm sorry, not shelter, the, um, the day service program. We have, um, uh, kitchen, we have computers and we have, workshops and um, music and art and, and all that fun stuff so that if they come there and they well, that's what they're happy to do but if they're they want more you know philanthropic lives and go into that employment side of it they come to me um so yeah so thank you again so much for having me Carol I, I'm really excited about this evening I'm hoping that I can give the viewers here and moms and dads and aunts uncles whoever is on this call um, families about uh, individuals that are looking for employment in the future someday maybe um to give you a little bit of a you know an idea of what's out there so thank you again so exploration and discovery it's it is really critical to the success of, of finding somebody the opportunity inside of employment. And part of what we do is we learn about who someone is through this, this process. Um, and, this, and this will be, you know, diving deep into the, all their aspirations, having a lot of conversations with the individuals, learning about their skills and their wants and their talents and 
um, exploring. We're going to explore, a, a, you know, through this through exploration discovery, we explore pretty heavily on different things that they 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 say they have an interest in. We want to what we call um, expose the individuals to what's out here in our community, right? You know, give them an idea, let them let them see what's out there. Um, and a lot of times we we it's completed in those natural settings um, when we do that. Well. We'll go out into if somebody says they want to learn about horses, we'll go out and learn about things about horses and what it means to be working in a maybe a horse stable or something like that. Um, this is not we do not do this as traditional assessments where, you know, the old pen and paper and, you know, circle what you like, what you don't like. It doesn't work that way. Um, what we do is we give those give everybody the opportunity to, you know, explore. Um, we empower the individuals, the, the people, the family and all of those connections. Um, we are very person centered with this process. Um, what works for them, you know, they, they let us know it's, it's their, their opportunity. We want them to be as involved as possible along with the people that love them the most. Um, cause we're, we're, I'm very familiar knowing that, you know, although I might meet somebody, mom and dads, aunt and uncles, whoever is in their life, they know, know that individual the most. And, and I'm going to have lots of conversations with them. Um, so yeah, okay, we can go to the next one. So exploration discovery, it again, right? It, it's a person-centered approach. Um, we want to, you know, expose, you know, all of the things like I mentioned already, you know, what's out here in our in our in our big world. Um, some of the individuals, you know, I've known in my past that um you know, they, they've come from more of a sheltered workshop where they, they haven't been given an opportunity to really even explore what's out in our communities. And this, the program is, is designed to do that, right? So, right, if you get, if you get somebody out there and you expose them to, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, manufacturing, if they have a love of machinery, if they tell you that that's something that, and you take them out there and you expose them to that, it's going to spark, right, an interest. It's going to say, oh my gosh, I have an opportunity here, maybe that I could do something and make my life enriched. Um, and that's that's again, that's that's something that's super cool that we try to do. Um, we can go to the next one. So, positive. Uh, uh, positive discovery profile. This is what it includes. So we want to we want to create a, a positive discovery, right? We're going to talk again about um, have, you know sitting down and talking with the individual about their interests and all of their unique talents. And and I actually you know when I when I talk to them, I, I and they tell me they have a, an interest about something. Maybe they love to paint. Uh, you know, I go show me, show me your skills, show me what you got there. Um, because that, for me, visually, I'm a visual learner, um, and and this is part of how I help to develop opportunities, trying to pull out all of their their skills, um, and and I have to see that, right? I have to be able to be able to acclimate that into an opportunity, and then find that inside of a business if, if that's something that they want to do. Um, special skills and and preferred tasks, maybe you know, they maybe there's some individuals who say I would love to be able to file, so we're going to put them in an opportunity outside and inside of a maybe a, a business that I have a connection with can you know I, I ask them can I um you know can I come in and file some of your some of your invoices for the day and I take that individual with me and we go do that um because you know what we all are very different in one environment than another right? I mean I could do stuff sitting inside of my office you know having them file but if you actually put them inside of an opportunity inside of a business you know they might have to dress up because it's an office setting it shows them the true right the true look of what a job may look like um it's all educating you know for me it's it's really showing them what the real big picture looks like looking at all their personal attributes right you know they're they're shining faces and they have great personalities and you know they they have a, a talent to to draw people in maybe and could be a great hostess maybe um, to be able to see people in, inside of a restaurant, you, you never know, right? And conditions for success. You know, this is where I ask those questions. Um, you know, what does conditions, what are the conditions for you to be successful? You know, maybe maybe you want to wear a uniform. Um, I have a gentleman right now, he, he's very adamant that he wants to be able to carry a briefcase. Okay, that's fine. You can carry a briefcase. At the, and, and part of that is customizing that inside of a business. And, you know, Although it's 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 a simple cost, it's a simple condition, right? But it's just something that's very valuable to him. 
Um, you know, there's some individuals who want to be able to have um, certain logos on their on their shirts, or they want to wear a baseball cap, or um, they want to be able to work construction and wear steel-toed shoes. You know, th these are all conditions of of success for them because um, that's what's going to make them thrive because they're doing something that they, they're really truly passionate about. Connections and resources. We're going to talk about connections and resources with families. Um, I'm pretty... I'm pretty confident to say probably probably 70, 80 percent of all the connections that family members have inside of our community help create opportunities for their loved ones because they have the, that natural connection with, a, you know, and maybe um, a business who has a, um, uh, uh, you know, a, an HR person. They, it's their neighbor. Right. So they, they, they we connect with them because they, you know, there, there's that, that natural connection. Right. And also those resources. Um, and it's it's really fun to be able to do it that way, uh, and, and it really becomes great outcomes, and and it creates longevity for an employment for individuals because we're, we want to make sure that you know we're we're fitting you know making sure that's a win win on both sides of the street um, that you know the individual is creating an opportunity or we're creating an opportunity with an employer, but we're also creating you know an opportunity for the individual because they have all these great talents that are going to marry up with a with a you know a, a potential employer. We can go to the next one. So through through the process for when we do exploration and discovery, um, there, there's there's five stages that we 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 hit, which is um, home and, and, and neighborhood observation. Um, and this is this is where um, you know we create uh, you know we will schedule time with that person, that individual who is uh, you know employment seeking. We'll come to their home and we're going to observe, you know, their home life. Um, I learned so much about somebody when I when I do that. And, you know, and I'm, I'm invited into their home and into their neighborhood. Um, I, I have a really cool little quick story. I there was a young lady um, who I, I thought I really, really knew, um, but I, I've never I was never to her home. And I went to her home to do a home and a neighborhood observation. And, and I walked in and she said, come into my, come into my room that I want to show you some really cool stuff. And um, I saw that she had all these beautiful paintings on the wall. And I'm like, oh my goodness, these are beautiful. And she said, I paint them. And I'm like, oh my goodness. I, I mean, these were, you know, these were really cool. Um, they were not paint by numbers. They are talent. She has talent. Now, granted, this is something she didn't want to do as an employment, but it showed me that she has skills. Um, and I was like completely drawn back by that. And it, it made me very heart warmed to know that she shared that with me. And, and I, I could see that she has some really talented skills. Inside of all of that, the, the neighborhood is where I, we, we, we start looking at the neighborhood. You know, is there walkable, you know, streets? Um, you know, with sidewalks, is there um, neighborhood um, uh, uh, what, uh, transportation pickup, or maybe a rabbit uh, pickup, or um, any uh, um, sorry tra trains or or um, buses, just to see if there's something that's walkable for employment, and is there close in proximity to the individual's home that there might be opportunities for employment? You know, there might be a, a strip mall down the road, or there might be a manufacturing um, you know, a facility that's nearby. Um, so those are the kind of things I kind of jump on my car and I drive around and maybe I'll take the individual with me and say, Hey, are, are you familiar with any of these things? Um, cause I want them to have that connection with me. And this is this, again, this whole exploration discovery is with the individual. Um, I, I, I just don't go out there and do it all. And then say, here it is that they're along with me on the ride. Um, because it is their employment and I want them to be excited about, you know, what their potential future could look like. Um, so then stage two is is personal interviews. This is where I want to be able to connect with that loved one, right? That loved one's family. Um, uh, if they live in the, a day or a, a residential program, maybe it's their staff people. It could even be um, um, somebody that they live with. Um, you know, uh, that they live with them for a while. They, they know them best because they're with them way long more than I ever have been at that point in time. Um, and, I, and we love to invite anybody into these meetings too, that have any type of interest. I've had individuals ask for past school teachers to come. 
Um, I've had them, they bring parishioners from their church because they're very, you know, involved in their church and they've known these people for many years and, and then we come in, you know, I invite them to the meeting as well. Um, so it's, 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 there's, there's a lot to go with all of this, but it's, it's it, the outcome in the end is, is a great outcome. Um, once we start doing a couple of, of, um, more conversations and then some discovery activities start to come stage three this is where i'm going to um uncover some uh, um, activities that the individual the individual says if they say that they um work with their dad out in the shed um on some lawn mowers i'm i i want to go look at that um and then create some discovery activities wrapped around that Maybe if I have a um, an employer in the community that I know that um, maybe refurbishes uh, lawn mowers, and and I, maybe I I can connect with them with them and take them and do a discovery out in the community with them. Um, again, that that um, maybe um, it could be even un, our familiar type of discovery activities. I had a gentleman who um, loves horses, and um, so I said, show me, I take me, I want to see your one of your um, horseback riding lessons, right? So um, he invited me one day and I went and watched him ride horseback. And um, he, now, you know, he's, he's a giant, you know, um, he, he's a um, um, not a very tall individual. And I, I was intrigued to see how he actually gets up on a horse. I have a hard time getting on a horse. So I wanted to see how he did it. And it was phenomenal. Again, it was one of those, I love to be intrigued. I love to be pleasantly surprised on their, you know, some skills the individuals have. And he loves horses and um, it was apparent when, when he was riding them. So, and then stage four is identifying. Once you start doing all of these discoveries and you're, you're, you're exploring and you're coming up, you know, you're starting to learn some of the things that somebody, you know, has uh, shown you some, some really great skills that are, that could be applied inside of a business. Then we start trying to identify some vocational themes. And a lot of times these themes should be really what we do, what we call is broad. They're very broad, right? So if somebody, if I've done a discovery activity because somebody said they love flowers and we may go to a hoarder, you know, do something in horticulture, um, you know, go to a flower shop and maybe we do a flower arrangement or we defoliage all of the, the leaves, that would be a theme like horticulture. Or if somebody is very loving and, and loves to help others and um, and maybe we've done some discoveries, maybe helping inside of a nursing home or at a church or, or whatever that might look like. That might be another um, theme could be maybe helping others. Um, and that's part of what we want them to be pretty broad, because if you have like a broad theme of like, um, you know, horticulture, it doesn't mean that you have to be in a flower shop. It could be, um, um, you know, in, in, a, in um, a farm nursery you know, or working at a literally like maybe even working at a Home Depot in their in their uh, plant section, you know, doing things like that. So it's not we don't want to drill into one thing. So we want it to be pretty pro. And when you do that, then you get these big themes. Then there's stage five is where we identify those businesses for each of those themes. So if it's if it's, again, horticulture, you know, then you start listing areas of businesses that logistically makes sense for the individual. So if they live, you know, here, you want to kind of span out about five, 10 miles radius, somewhere around there. We try to stay within a 20, 25 minute um, ride. And, and you start looking at businesses that um, that I could, you know, the job developer or the career counselor can start, you know, connecting with to be able to, um, I, you know, go in and start doing some job development. And again, these identifying these business, like I said, you know, 70, about 70% 70 come from families. Um, and again, this is a, this is all a group effort. This isn't just me sitting in a room, to, you know, formulating all of this. Um, this is all, you know, team effort. We do 30 day meetings and we bring people back in and we start talking about things, but the, the businesses are, are um, you know, identifying those businesses is definitely a collaborative effort. So you can go to the next one. So initial meeting, right? This is where we're going to do this. We're going to, this, the, the top one, the number one. So part of, part of what we're going to do is we're going to sit down with, again, in a, in a room, however you want to look at it. Um, and we, we let the individual lead that meeting and we're going to explain the overall process, right? Of the, of exploration and discovery. And what is that going to look like? Who's all involved? What are the roles 
of not only myself, but the job developer, the career counselor, um, uh, the support coordinator who, who are the job coach, um, and especially the role of the individual, that they will need to actively participate in their job development and their exploration and discovery. Because again, this is their job, right? We want to make sure that they are fully engaged in it. Um, and making sure that, and, and what the objectivity is, uh, is right? The objectivity is to find employment. Um, we're going to establish all of the ground rules with that, uh, during that meeting. Uh, we're going to develop personal interview lists, right? And that's for when I go and do that home observation. Uh, we're going to obtain, you know, approval for, for that home observation. And we're going to talk about re those records that we receive, you know, maybe some school records. We might want to look at those and talk about them. We, because it's nice to see where people are at the moment. And it maybe if it's a year past, but we still kind of get an idea of who they are through, you know, school records and through uh, maybe other, maybe they're an, an individual that has had employment in the past. You know, I love to hear about what, you know, what they've been doing in the past year. Um, and then we'll, we'll definitely schedule another meeting to meet together so that we keep everything rolling, keep everything exercised and exciting. This whole process is about six to eight weeks. If it goes any further than that, then there should be a reason why. Um, just because we want to keep everything, and like I said, energized and excited and, and, and moving in the right direction. Um, so you can go to the next one. So here we go, the home, the home and neighborhood observation, that's stage one, right? We're going to learn all about the different chores the individual does, all of their hobbies, their skills, and their interests. Um, I, I love learning about what their chores are. And um, believe it or not, learning about somebody doing wash, you know, or doing their laundry is very important. If somebody says, I can do my wash, show me how you do your wash. I, I, I've made the mistake one time when somebody says they know how to do wash. And I said, show me how you do wash. And he took the basket and he says, mom, my wash is, here's my mom, mom this is my wash. And they sat it on the washing machine. I'm like, no, this is not what I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn. I, I learned that he can carry a wash basket and it was pretty heavy. So I knew he had some endurance, which was fantastic because that's, that is something I do document that he's got, you know, the stamina to be able to do that. But I wanted, I want to learn what, what, what wash doing washes. And maybe, you know, that does he know how to use measuring? Does he know how to turn the dial? Does he know when it, when the, what, what it means when the buzzer goes out? How, you know, how much do you put it in for the dryer and things like that? Learning about the hobbies, right? Um, and again, all of those skills and, 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 and certainly their interests of, of what's really makes them, you know, a happy person. Um, and again, identifying that, that existing social capital. I always, Talk about, you know, who do you know in some of the areas of interest? Who do you hang out with? You know, is there, there, there might be some really, um, um, some people that ha are already in, inside of businesses that, um, you know, that maybe I, we could connect with. Um, learn about the area resources, the business transportation in that area. I kind of, I kind of did talk about this a little bit, but that's, this is, you know, again, this is what we do in stage one of the home and observation. Um, if you want to go to the next one, go ahead. So personal interviews, right? Interview the people that know the person well. You know, again, I, I kind of jumped ahead a little bit. Sorry, I get, I get all excited about this. Um, yeah, I, I, I listen very intently when mom and dad talk to me about the person, you know, their their loved one, their their son or their daughter. Um, and I, I have lots of love, you know, really great conversations about them. And I, I want them to tell me the good, the bad, and the ugly. I want to hear it all so that I that I can help support their 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 loved one the best way I know how. Um, we definitely, you know, again, um, previous experience and history of, if maybe, again, if they have had work experiences in the past, uh, our previous experience, maybe some volunteer opportunities that they have done that, you know, talk to me about what that looks like, you know, and, and we, we have, you know, I learn about all of that. Um, I even, I even after we're done doing all of the interviews and and I'm thinking maybe I need to talk to more people. I ask for seeking recommendations for, you know, additional, you know, interviewees. Um, and sometimes they'll say, yeah, maybe you need to talk to grandma or, or, you know, maybe you need to talk to their brother who, you know, and maybe they don't even live in the state. Um, I Give me their phone number. I'll give them a call if I need to. Um, more the merrier. Because um, everybody has an idea of who they think they know their low one is. But then all of a sudden, you know, a brother may have another perspective. Um, and it's kind of neat to, to, to hear all that. And again, reviewing those records, 
um, and talk about their diplomas, cert certification tools, equipment used in the past. Because I, I try to also build a resume when I'm going through all of this um, so that I can, um, you know, in the end, have a nice developed resume for somebody, especially if they've had work experience in the past or if they have some volunteer stuff in the past. Um, and we do this again. I sit down with the individual. You know, this is how we do it at Penmar. Um, and we sit down and we actually develop um, a, a resume. Um, sometimes it's a visual resume. It's got pictures on it. It shows I might take pictures of somebody, um, you know, does lo the, um, the the lawn repair. And I see them, you know, they're they're getting their wrenches out and things like that. I take pictures of that, um, you know, of course, with their permission and say, this is we're going to put this on their visual resume. A visual resume is um, it just speaks volumes because an employer can actually physically see what what I'm trying to you know help um, develop for them inside of a business because this is all about customization. Uh, we're we're not looking for sh what we call self shelf jobs. We are looking for needs inside of businesses that we can develop um, and and create an, a whole different outcome um, for 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 that business that was makes sense because they have a need. Um, you can go to the next one. I'm doing the time. So, um, personal, uh, more personal. What, you know, the, the personal interviews is where are you at your best? This is a lot of times when I sit down with the individual. I always ask them, where are you at your best? When when do you feel that you know that you're you're good? Are, are you good in the morning? Do you are you an early riser? You know, are you midday? Um, are you only like working on the weekends? What where are you at your best? You know, um, who are you with when you're at your best? Might be, you know, with their peers, um, because that tells me something about employment. That maybe employment should be wrapped around, you know, that peer mentoring, right? That maybe they don't want to work with people that are twenty years older than than them, or twenty years younger than them, depending on how old they are. Because um, I work with all all ranges of ages. I, you know, I've employed somebody just the other week who was sixty one, um, and you know, he, just, he he wanted to work around, you know. More people around the stage. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, where are you when you're at your best? Right. Maybe it's in a group setting. You know, they, whatever they tell me, that's what I want to listen to. Uh, and what are you most passionate about? I love answer, asking that question. Um, you know, some people say I'm most passionate about being with people, or um, maybe being by myself and creating something, um, or or hanging out with my friends. You know, it just, it just depends. So learning, it's a lot of learning when we do this. We can go to the next one. So stage three, this is the discovery activities. Actually, I, I love this part of this, this, this product, the exploration discovery. And with lots, again, like I said before, activities, they really should be done in our community. And that's where we do them. Um, I, I'm pretty enthralled in or in, in, in embedded in our community now. I've been doing this since 2009, 2000, around 2012, somewhere around there. Um, so I've gotten to know a lot of different businesses and I can call on those businesses um, and say, you know, I have an opportunity. I would just love to explore with somebody just to do a work assessment if it is um, or do an activity with them inside your business. Um, and it's it definitely tells a great story. So if somebody wants, you know, an activity in the community it could be uh, maybe somebody says they want to um, stock children's clothing, maybe, I don't know, hang clothing. And if I take them, sometimes I go to like some of the bigger box stores just because I, I do that on purpose. If I go to like to a Walmart or something like that, because I want to see what happens in a, in a larger, larger area. Are they overwhelmed? Um, now, certainly I, I, if they get overwhelmed, it, you know, I kind of know from conversations from mom or dad. Um, if it's something that's not going to be healthy for them, I'm not going to take them. So trust me, I want to make sure it's a good experience. But if they, if I walk in and they're like, oh my goodness, it's too much, or they they, they get sidetracked because they're screaming kids over here, or, you know, or there's, um, it's just too big of an environment, or they get lost in the store. I, I learn from that so that I, I then eventually say, well, then an environment for them would be in a smaller environment for them to be able to work in. Um you know, or, or you know, um, see how, how well they do an activity with maybe folding children's clothing by size, by color. Uh, can they hang it on the hanger correctly? You know, we'll go over and I'll take a couple things off the hangers and, and things like that. And, and I say, put them back and put them back where they need to belong. 
Um, and I watch and let them, let them do that. And if they fail, that's okay. You know, I reassure them. It's okay. Nothing wrong with failing. It's nothing wrong. You didn't fail. We learned something today. Um, and then we together, you know, I help them put it back together and we, we move on. If they do really, really well, then we say, guess what? You have a really great employable skill. If this is something that you're very passionate about, I can see you doing this. Um, and again, we do them in familiar and unfamiliar environments. Um, you know, again, like riding horses or, and, and I always try to do something just a little bit that's unfamiliar to them. If they've never tried something, I say, well, let's go try it. Um, because then again, you can see, you know, you know, where their, where their skills are, where maybe they, um, may have a struggle with, um, so that I can anticipate, um, if that's happens inside of the top, you know, uh, you know, uh, a potential, um, place of employment. Um, cause there's always, um, workplace supports and we all have them, but we call them work state, uh, workplace support plans. Um, w- whether you have an intellectual disability or not, we, we all have them, um, where you have to, maybe somebody has an issue with punching in, right? So these are things that we, we look for, um, so that we can help incorporate that in. So I anticipate those things, right? And those are, again, conversations that I might learn from family. Maybe somebody isn't necessarily computer savvy. Um, so an unfamiliar thing would be maybe for somebody if they're not computer savvy would be, hey, let's let's take let me see how you, how, how well you work on a computer. Um, if they say they've they've Google things, show me that you Google things. Can you get on there? You know, I want to want to see all that. You know, and again, it's identifying any of those support needs if if that's if it's needed. Um, activities creating a positive picture of who that person really is. And it does. Um, I can walk away from doing a, a couple of these different activities and I can get a really good idea of what, what something is going to look like for them for employment. And that's just because of doing it for so many years. Um, I don't always get it right. Trust me, I don't. But, I, you know, I try really hard to make sure it is a good outcome. Um, so, yeah. If you want to go ahead and go to the next one. So personal connections, you know, um, who do you know? This is, these are, again, these are those connections we were talking about, like with mom and dad. Um, you know, how do you know them? I, I talk with families when I'm doing the interviews. I talk to the individual, you know, what do they do? Um, you know, if, if, they, if they know Joe down the street um, and they say, oh, he works at, you know, XYZ store. Well, tell me what they do. You know, can we go talk to them? I mean, let's go see if maybe we can find um, something intriguing about what he does. Does and maybe it's spark, it'll spark an interest in them. Um, who are your neighbors, right? Uh, what do they do, and 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 what do they do for a living? Um, what services businesses do you regularly use? Uh, because sometimes there's you know uh, you know individuals they may go to um, you know their favorite barber. Um, and they turn around and go, wow, I would love to learn how to maybe cut hair or um, like to maybe work in a salon. Um, and what, what does that look like? I don't know. It just depends. But, you know, we can maybe can make, a, again, that connection and go and do a, you know, maybe a, a shadowing of that or maybe even a work a work assessment inside of there, helping to, you know, keep keep the the uh, the um, uh, the hair salon cleaned up. If that's one of their skills, maybe they're really good cleaners and they they like sweeping and they like keeping everything organized on the shelves because you know how it is there. There's towels always to be cleaned. There's always things that need to be done inside of there because they're constantly moving, you know, their business, you know, uh, patrons through. Um, where do you where do you belong? You know, where do you belong? You know, in school, churches, um, you know, where where are things that are important to you? You know, church clubs. Um, you know, what do you do in those clubs? You know, you have. Again, more of those personal connections there. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just something that I love to listen to and, and, and try to um, create an opportunity and make it a connection with those people. Um, go ahead, you can go to the next one. So vocational themes, right? We were talking about that. This is where, you know, once we do all of those activities and we're starting to uh, do, do those um, activities in the community that are familiar and unfamiliar, you're going to, I'm going to start kind of getting an idea it's starting stuff is going to start clicking for me and I'm working with the individual and saying you know is this interesting to you and we're going to create those themes right so I want to identify three of them uh, and and they're not job descriptions right remember we're talking about like horticulture helping others um or it could even be retail it could be retail somebody says I want to work in a store 
that's fine. Retail, retail can be all over the place. It could be in a store, you know, it could be, you know, um, uh, anywhere in, in our community. And these, again, the themes are going to be broad and they hold numerous, numerous different types of jobs inside of those things. And the theme really gives the guidance for the, for the career development um, so that I can, uh, you know, lay out a plan that looks, you know, like what the, that theme is and inside of those businesses. And, and exp you know, that's where we're going to, um, you know, go go into those businesses with a, m a mindset of what the skills that I, I learned from all of those different activities we did um and, and also in listening to the individual you know about all of that um so yeah you can go on to the next one so that was stage four there is five and I and I'll, I'll get to five here in a second second so again here here could be some of those just a couple of examples of those vocational themes uh, culinary. Somebody says they they want to they love to cook. Um, could be cu culinary. Could be all kinds of things. It doesn't mean that you necessarily have to cook. Uh, maybe you really like. Um, I mean, part part of cooking. Maybe um, you um, like to dip dip strawberries in chocolate. Um, you know, you could, you could be working on an edible arrangement. You know, that type of environment. Anything that does with deals with food. Animal care could be all over the place. It could be inside of a, you know, maybe a, um, a certain pet store or it could be in a veterinarian's hospital a hospital, or, or a, a office. It, it all depends. Transportation. Um, sorry, I don't know why that one's on there. I, I, I forgot to take that one off of there. Sorry. Entertainment. You know, that could be in movie theaters. It could be in um, uh, stores that have music or um uh, back in the day, I know they still have them out there, not back in the day, but I know they still have them out there where, you know, DVDs for Game Boys and all that fun stuff, you know, it's all about the entertainment. Even it could be um, working in a um, uh, a theater, musical theater, right? Seating people, maybe that might be something or maybe even stuff that's behind the scenes. If I develop, you know, create or find skills that make sense in that type of environment, somebody who can help with moving stage equipment, you know, when they're doing the, the acting and things like that. Um, I'm actually, I'm working on something like that right now, as a matter of fact. Um, so that's one of something that would be really, really cool. Um, so it, again, see how they're, they're really broad. They're not, they're not um, positioned um, to, you know, you know, a secretary. It's, it's a broad theme. The, the stage five, and I, I and I, I forgot to put stage five on here, and I apologize. But stage five is that development plan. So again, that's where um, I know I mentioned it, but that's where you take the themes and then you start listing all of the different places, right? Um, that you can um, start um, the job developer can start communicating with to create those relationships. And this is job development is not about going in and asking an employer for a job it is our job to go in and create a relationship to understand where their needs are inside of their businesses find out where their backlogs are find out where you know their um startup and their button up um, um, um their struggles are maybe on in a manufacturing setting um where um, you know maybe the, the the front of the line they just can't get stuff to the line fast enough. And at the back of the line, they can't get stuff packaged up and palletized and wrapped up and moved fast enough. You know, you, you wanna you wanna look at where those things are. Or even office office settings, you know. Um, I, I created an opportunity where it was the voter registration, um, the expired ones. They can't they couldn't get them scanned fast enough. Um, so I was able to, you know, look, that was a big backlog for them. They they had rows and rows of filing cabinets and they just couldn't find somebody that had a skill that loved that type of skill. Right. And uh, a repetitive, that was a repetitive skill for them. Um, so I was able to develop something for them. And that's through the County of York. I don't know if you guys, anybody of you guys are close to the County of York. They've been a phenomenal um, partner. Um, but this this is again. I want to talk about those themes and everything. Sorry, um, and this is where you're. Um, I know as a job developer, I'm going to go start talking with those employers and finding um, where their needs are, and then seeing if I can, I mean, create a potential opportunity for somebody. But it's all about creating relationships. It's and 
and tr gaining that trust and, and getting the employer on board to customize an opportunity. Because again, it's not a shelf job. It's not going to be a position. You may have to apply to that position, a, a position inside that business, but just because to, to get the ball rolling to get to the next step, because everything is now computerized, but it's really creating the, uh, um, um, you know, uh, uh, and reforming a, a complete different um, position. But this is Holly. This is a profile on Holly when we when we did her, um, and this is just something when we learned about her that she was she was really very outgoing and social. I learned about her. She enjoyed knitting, right? She completed puzzles, playing words with friends, and doing you know all of those word searches. She loved to help others. She liked being outdoors, doing gardening, and working with her hands. And she enjoyed participating in that horde. There's a horticulture class out at Talamar. Um, I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with that. Um, and she could really read really well, really well and, re and write really well. Um, has work experience copying documents and answering phones at a school. Um, and the chores at home she includes, she loved to do laundry, vacuuming, and cooking. So these are all the different things that I learned about Holly. Um, if you want to go to the next one for me. So what we did when I did, when I learned all of those things about her, I, I put her into some of the tasks. I wanted to see, see, this is what we learned about her, right? We learned that she, I, I, I was able to partner with different employers um, through through the discovery. And I took her to, um, 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 uh, um, sorry, a flower shop and, and I made a connection with a flower shop and I became friends with the owner. And I said, I have this young lady, I would just love to be able to do an assessment with you. Can, can we, I bring her in? Can you show her what you guys do? Whew, she was phenomenal at it. She, you can see her face here. Um, it was, she just loved it. She loved scanning, um, scanning documents, right? Um, faxing. She loved the, the one we used to do, the old, you know, fax machines and things like that. Um, um, copying. She loved to copy things too. Um, she loved, you know, doing, um, you know, folding things and, and making things neat. She's a very neat and orderly young lady. So this, these were some of the discovery that I put into action from what I learned from her. Um, again, you know, I, you can talk all day, you can tell me all day, but show me. So that I can really see that that skill is an employable skill. Want to go to the next one? So here she is. So this is Holly, right? So when I met with uh, another employer, um, I, I I went in and I, I introduced myself, told you know, explained to them who I am, uh, and I wanted to learn about where their what, what about their business. I wanted to create that relationship with that business. Um, and the lady, she was pleasant to me. She, she was telling me, you know, oh my goodness, you know, we we would love to have somebody because a support team during their busy times um, and during the week and during the holidays, um, they, they just could not get the preparation of the flowers done quick enough so that their designers could, you know, get all of them arranged and get them out the door, which would cause um, um, higher revenue rates, right? So... And um, their store needed vacuuming. Um, they they have things that they put labels on because they sell all kinds of different things inside of their store. Um, and I and I was like, I I have a young lady for you. Could I introduce you to her? Um, to you to her. Um, and I had Holly come in and we did a work assessment. We I introduced them. You know, I, I brought Holly back and we we made that connection. Um, and Holly is now employed here. And part of part of Holly's um, opportunity here was because she she loves to knit and things like that. The the owner of the store said, you know, put bring some of your stuff and let, you can go ahead and sell your stuff in our store. And Holly just thought that was the coolest thing. So she was making a little cash on the side and she was doing something that she loved. Um, and she has been there even through COVID, even though COVID ended a little bit, you know, because we all kind of shut down for a while. She was one of the first people to come back because she is extremely talented at getting everything defoliaged and getting everything in the buckets. And she knew how to fill the buckets with the right amount of fluid in it and with the right amount of um, cleaner or not, you know, the, the stuff you put in there, keep the flowers nice and fresh. Um, and she has that pleasant smile. Um, you know, uh, patrons who patron a lot ask for Holly now. They want to know where she's at and where she's doing. And she loves to wait on them and she's learning. So the other part of it is that is so loving to me is that she's learning different flowers and somebody says, come in and show me where, where's your daffodils at or where's your, your poinsettias ahead or whatever that, whatever, I, I'm not a flower girl, but where are they? And she can direct them now. So now she's helping out 
and being helping to be a salesperson. So it's kind of cool. But yeah, okay, we can go to the next one. I get really passionate about this because this this is this is my this is very cool for for individuals to be able to be really embedded in our community and being employed. Um, you know, I've had some in individuals in the past, and just a cool, quick story I wanted to tell you before I move on. Um, his name was David, and he said I could tell this story. And and David is somebody that I went to high school with, and um, many 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 years many many years ago. And you know, we all you know graduated high school. We all parted our ways. I went off to school. He didn't. He went home, um, and he literally stayed home for for the whole time. Never worked. Um, and uh, you know, he was one of those really very boisterous kind of people. You know, he knew everybody at school. Everybody knew who David was. He had this grand grand personality. Um, and when I one day I, I was walking through our work, um, our offices, and um, at the end of the office, I was I, I had to take a double look, and I could not believe it was him. And he looked, and he, he knew exactly who I was. And we embraced, and it was a wonderful experience. And I thought, oh my goodness, this is a gentleman I know I can employ. Um, and I thought I really, really knew who he was, believe it or not, just because of what I knew from high school. Um, and we had a show. We had a. Um, um, a supportive employment program where we had enclaves where, you know, back in the day, everybody's kind of migrated into that cleaning side of it. And since he was very high functioning individual and, and, and very articulate, he, they put him in, you know, into that type of environment. He hated it. He hated it. He didn't want to clean. It wasn't his thing. And I said, bring, uh, bring him into development I, or, and, and the exploration discovery. I, I, I want to work with him. I found out so many things about this gentleman that I never knew. At, fantastic in in um, working on small engine repair. Um, worked in his dad's machine machine. Um, um, back in, he had a little machine shop in the back um, at his house, and he did a couple little things on the side. And David would help out with there. So once I put him through the exploration and discovery and learned about him, um, now we have to remind myself. And, and David said I could tell you this is that David had very high inappropriate behavior. Um, inappropriate sexual behavior, um, un, un, unable to not, you know, did not keep his hands to himself, said inappropriate things. And what I found out was, is that he was not happy in who, in, in, in his life. Um, and once we discovered, you know, going through this process, you know, and I, I, I exposed him to all of these different things and we tried all these things and I ended up making a connection with a machine shop who runs CNC machines and I took him in there and said, let's see if this is something that that just makes you happy. Let's see what we'll see what happens and see if you have a skill for this. He he impressed the employer to know. And he says, I wish I had 100 more Davids. He employed him um, immediately. And David works there running a CNC machine and creating that relationship with the employer, you know, and I we were able to. Um, disclosed. David said he was willing to disclose because he knew he wanted to have better behavior. He never, never had another issue again. Um, he knew that if uh, employment was so is, is so important to him that if he has inappropriate behavior, then he knows he's going to lose it. He, you know, or get a you know, there's people out there will will you know may not be very nice to people if if they're they're inappropriate to them, and rightfully so. You know, they, you want them to be appropriate. So we didn't want him to get in trouble. So we we did have a one on one support staff with him uh, in the beginning for about six months, and it I just it, it it didn't even occur. It didn't even didn't even happen. So he is now completely for years now doing very very well. So that's the a good outcome for David is 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 that. So anyway, just wanted to tell you that story because it's a I think it's a it, it's a it's a good it's a good story to be heard. Um, just a couple of additional considerations when we talk about employment is is those resources for transportation, making sure that those are there. Um, because it, it, I can get somebody a job, and if they can't get there, then that's a problem. So we always talk about that pretty early on. There are so many different opportunities, um, you know, for transportation. There is now if if um, Uber, there is Rabbit, um, there's moms and dads, there's aunts, uncles, neighbors. Um, there are some. Um, uh, volunteer individuals in the community that are, you know, will take people to and from work. 
Benefit planning, this is a big one. A lot of individuals and families get a little concerned that they will lose their benefits. Um, and this is where we wanna make sure that you inquire about benefits planning. And if you're in the state of Pennsylvania, OVR, is, you have to go through OVR in order to go through like my type of services, but they do offer benefit counseling. If you're through the department, um, uh, or excuse me, in the Maryland area, it's called DOORS, um, uh, Diversified Occupational Rehabilitation. They have also um, work um, uh, benefit counselors as well. There are a lot of work incentives that are out there be prior that if you get into them, prior to them ever losing their benefits, it could be a couple years until that would even happen, if it would. Um, sometimes the, the amount of monies, you know, you can you can juggle that around a little bit so that it doesn't affect at all. Um, we want to talk about past experiences, um, environments that make sense for the individual, right? Hot environments, cold environments. These are things I try to make sure because uh, I want to make sure that there's any health considerations I need to know about. You know, if somebody says they want to work with plants, but they're highly allergic to, you know, ragweed, <laughs> you know, I want to make sure that I'm not, you know, gearing towards working in a flower shop because, um, I, you know, I, I want to make sure their health is okay. So there's just a couple of things that we want to try to, try to um, you know, maybe consider. Um, okay, you can go to the next one. Just to make sure how far we are. Okay, so uh, it's always about the person. Right, we are very person-centered. This process is 100% person-centered, um, and we, you know we want to make sure that you know we 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 take into account to all of their considerations, all of their dreams, their aspirations, their wants for a really meaningful life for them. Um, I want them to live their best life, so I want to make sure that I design and help support that through their employment and making sure that they stay connected to their community. Out with employment, you know, making sure that they still get connected with their friends and families, because sometimes that's important. They think if they get a job, now they're going to miss out, right? They got they got the old FOMO, right? Fears of missing out. I I, I ensure that, that that's not going to happen because we make sure we make sure families are on board with making you know getting making sure that doesn't happen. Time I mean, time of essence is definitely you know something. Um, respect with uh, and respect the process. Um, this is part of. <clears throat> You know, making sure that everybody is on board, everybody is following the rules, and everybody is actively participating, and the process moves in a respectful way and in a, in a, a spect, uh, respectful amount of time. Um, results in a positive. It's going to result in a positive outcome. Yeah, it, that that says it all. Results, you know, in a positive outcome, and that's truly the the my goal as well. Um, I want to make sure that. You know, an individual is in a, an opportunity that makes sense to them. They're they're excited about it. Um, it. It's a good environment for them. It's a positive. It's a safe environment for them. Um, you know, we all get a little bit worried about you know um, victimization. Um, uh, you know, I, I I certainly would not put my. I, I always remind myself if I would put my own child there, then I, it's a good environment. If I wouldn't put my own child there, it's not a good environment. And I I will not go in those directions and make sure it's definitely a positive. Okay, you can go on. So hopefully that was a broad overview of, of, of what exploration and discovery is. Um, the key, key things I probably think I just want you guys to take away is that it is definitely person-centered around the individual. Um, it is employment through this process will be and should be customized if it needs to be, there are some individuals who can handle a full a regular shelf job. If so, we're still there to help explore and learn about their skills and help find them that opportunity. And if it is a secretarial position or a um, um, a machine operator of some sort, have at it. That that we're we're happy to do that as long as it makes sense for the individual. But if they need our help and support with that, the customization of of, of guiding them through, you know, what works and what doesn't work for them and and, and, and customizing it, um, we're there for them. So this is my contact information. Um, going through the, the state of Pennsylvania, um, if you're, um, I, I am also a, um, a certified employment support professional. I am also a certified ACRE, um, um, ACRE um, trainer which I am nationally certified to do across our country, which is the Association of Community Rehabilitation Educators. Um, so there are a lot of um, uh, other organizations outside of the York County area that we work with that 
um, can or maybe could help support your loved ones. I know definitely reach out to them and see if they have, um, you know, customized employment in their plans. Um, but if not, you can go through the offices of vocational rehabilitation um, and they can guide you through that. Um, with us, you know, the going through OVR, especially in the York County area, they have to go through OVR first and then they get referred to me. Um, and that's uh, um, just th just how the, the state has, that's how it has to be. But this is my information. I, you know, if you guys have any questions um, after this uh, webinar um, and, um, you know, don't hesitate, please, please, you know, I, if I can get you an answer, I'd be happy to do that. I know if there's any questions with the q and I, I don't know if Carol has any for me. Um, I'd be we happy do. to answer them. Okay, fantastic. We have a couple of questions. So we can stop the screen share and we're happy to. Uh, thank you so much, Trish. Trisha, this yeah. was amazing.